Hello, my name's Nanette Newman and I'm going to read you a story about an earwig and it's called The Importance of Being Ernest the Earwig. It was one of those days when Ernest the Earwig was feeling gloomy. I've been thinking, he said to his friend Edward, if people take any notice of us earwigs, it's usually just to say yuck and flick us away. Why, why does nobody ever write stories about us? What do you mean? asked Edward. Well, said Ernest, when have you ever heard of a book about an earwig? Like The Mystery of the Phantom Earwig or The Adventures of Super Earwig? Why? Why are we always left out? Edward thought about this. Hmm, I don't know, he said. Exactly, said Ernest. Neither do I. Then Ernest said, I mean, take nursery rhymes, for instance. Why aren't we in any of those? After all, why is it a spider with little Miss Muffet? True, said Edward. And it could have been, little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and her earwig. Or, sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye, four and twenty earwigs baked in a pie. And what about, said Edward, there was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many earwigs, she didn't know what to do. Perfect, said Ernest. Oh, and they write about birds and bees and butterflies and ladybirds, Edward interrupted. Ladybird, ladybird, fly away home. Your house is on fire, your earwigs are gone. A tear came into Ernest's eye. Oh, much better, he sighed. Very moving. It was that night when the moon was full and everything looked the colour of blackberries that Ernest had his great idea. It came to him quite suddenly, as all the best ideas do, and it made him tremble. I have to get into a book, he thought. That's it. I must get into a book and be part of a story so that people will understand the importance of earwigs. I must do it. I shall do it. He felt so excited about his idea that he couldn't sleep. So he sat and thought about his great plan until the night was over. Now, very next morning, Ernest hurried along to the bookshop. He waited for the shop to open. Then he scurried inside. He saw a sign that said children's literature. Ernest knew that the word literature was just a fancy name for books. This is it, Ernest said to himself, the moment I've been waiting for. He ran up and down the shelves, reading the titles until he came to Alice in Wonderland. Oh, Alice had so many exciting adventures and such strange things happened to her, like falling down a rabbit hole and meeting all sorts of odd creatures. He slid into the book and to his delight, he found he'd come in at the page where the Mad Hatter was having a tea party. There was the Dormouse, fast asleep. There was Alice and the March Hare and... No earwig, said Ernest. Ha, typical. He sat on top of the Mad Hatter's hat so that Alice could see him. He then slithered in and out of the pages of his favourite story, The Wind in the Willows. There was Mole walking through the snow in the woods. He was so frightened. So Ernest crawled onto his shoulder and whispered, I'm here, I'm here, I'm with you. He climbed back onto the shelves again and this time came to Peter Pan. At first he crawled into the page with the pirates and the crocodile, but he thought that was much too scary. So he decided to fly with Peter and Wendy and the boys to Never Never Land. I'm flying, I'm flying, straight on till morning, he shouted. He heard Tinker Bell laugh and he felt so happy. Now, after his adventures, Ernest was in need of a rest. At last he knew what it was like to be in a book. The bookshop would be closing in a minute, so Ernest took one last look at the shelves and just for a moment, 
it seemed as if every title included an earwig. When he got home, he told Edward everything that had happened. Today, said Ernest, I set out to prove that every creature, no matter how small, no matter how insignificant, no matter how unimportant they may seem, deserves the chance to be noticed. Oh, I couldn't have said it better myself, said Edward. My dear friend, Ernest continued with tears in his eyes, today has made a new earwig of me. I feel it's only proper that I should write a book about my experiences, my, my struggles, my achievements for everyone to read. Oh, definitely, said Edward. I mean, you must. What will you call it? Ernest thought, and then he said, the importance of being Ernest the Earwig. Ernest cropped up in quite a few books after that. In fact, if you turn the page, you'll probably find he's managed to get into this one. The end.